Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So today we move to chapter 5 We talk about uh, yeah, The continuation of the, the previous chapter We'll talk about uh, our expressions Pronouns and anaphores And we'll also have an introduction to antecedent Co-index Binding theories and some principles about binding domains. Okay, let's start. And now we'll talk about noun phrase. Here we have our expressions, anaphor and pronoun. Okay, let's have a look at this example. Felicia wrote a fine, sorry, Felicia wrote a fine paper on Zapotec. So from this sentence, we have. Noun phrase Felicia, which is a name, and when we, for example, you write this sentence, it seems that you assume someone else you are writing to knows who Felicia is. Jadi ketika kita menuliskan misalnya kalimat seperti ini, ada kata Felicia wrote a fine paper on Zapotec. Jadi diasumsikan bahwa kita tahu yang kita aja berbicara atau yang kita uh, pembaca dari tulisan kita itu tahu siapa Felicia. Why? Because Felicia is about someone, it's about girl, it's about a person in a real world. Nah, jadi ketika kita uh, menuliskan noun phrase yang berupa sosok seseorang dalam dunia nyata atau sosok sesuatu dalam dunia nyata, that's what is called by or expression or referring expressions ya, jadi referring expression is a noun phrase that gets its meaning by referring to an entity in the world jadi noun phrase yang mendapatkan makna dengan merujuk kepada suatu benda dalam du di dunia ini so of course when you uh, hear or read Felicia you have imagination in your mind about Uh, maybe it's a girl, it's someone from uh, a certain country, for example. So that's what we call as our expression. Okay, now let's talk about Anna Four. Okay, let's have a look at this example. Heidi bobbed her head, sorry, Heidi bobbed herself on the head with a zucchini. So here, we have Heidi as a our expression, because Heidi means a Heidi is a noun phrase that gets its meaning by referring to an entity in the world. And then we have herself here. So herself is about Heidi. Yeah. So because herself refer to a noun phrase and we call it as an anaphor. Because anaphor is a noun phrase that obligatorily gets its meaning from another noun phrase in the sentence. Jadi anafor itu adalah noun phrase, herself ini juga noun phrase yang harus mendapatkan makna dari noun phrase yang lainnya. Jadi herself ini tidak akan memiliki makna kalau tidak ada rujukannya. Jadi dia harus merujuk ke noun phrase yang lain dalam kalimat tersebut. Oke, okay, that is anafor. Now we have another one, pronoun. What is pronoun? Say for example, misalnya kalimat ini kita ganti, he popped herself. On the head with zucchini, he Heidi kita ganti menjadi he, so we called he as pronoun. Why? Because noun phrase pronoun is a noun phrase that may but need not get its meaning from another word, another word in the sentence. Jadi ketika kita ganti Heidi menjadi he atau she, for example, she popped herself on the head with the zucchini. She di sini tidak merujuk pada Uh, noun phrase manapun dalam kalimat it's okay because noun uh, pronoun itu tidak harus merujuk pada kata yang lain dalam satu kalimat so that's the difference between pronoun and for and or expression okay now let's move to binding theory now, so what's the relationship between our expression and and for and also pronoun to Binding theory. So here we have another example. Di sini ada satu contoh. Herself bobbed her Heidi on the hat with the zucchini. Ini kalimat yang tadi hanya 
Herself-nya kita pindah ke depan. Kita jadikan subject. Is it possible for anaphora to be subject? Ternyata anaphora itu tidak bisa menjadi subject. Kenapa? We'll have a look at the next explanation after this. Yeah, but the theory of the synthetic restrictions. Nah, ini tadi uh, anaphora tidak boleh menjadi subject. Itu termasuk synthetic restrictions on where these different non-phrase types can appear in the sentence. Di mana posisi non-phrase atau tipe non-phrase yang bagaimana yang bisa muncul di mana dalam sebuah kalimat. This is what we call as binding theory. So, binding theory makes a reference to the structural relations we've uh, or we learn about in the previous chapter. Jadi yang telah kita pelajari chapter yang lalu tentang sentence uh, structural relations. Nah, di sini akan kita lihat nanti uh, aplikasinya. Oke, okay, let's next. Oke, okay, next. Here we have distribution versus uh, anaphor distributions. So the distributions of anaphors uh, divided into two antecedent and co-indexations. We have a look at co-indexations after this. First, antecedent. What is antecedent? Apakah antecedent itu? Antecedent is a noun phrase that gives its meaning to another noun phrase. Antecedent adalah kata benda atau noun phrase yang memberikan makna kepada noun phrase yang lainnya. Okay, let's go back to this example. Tadi ada kalimat ini, Heidi popped herself on the head with the zucchini. Tadi kita tahu Heidi is our expression. Heidi kemudian memberikan makna kepada herself, karena her ini merujuk kepada Heidi. Herself ini adalah anafor, kan anafor harus merujuk kepada non phrase yang lainnya. Nah, karena Heidi ini memberikan makna kepada non phrase yang lainnya, maka dia disebut sebagai antecedent. Jadi noun phrase yang memberi makna kepada noun phrase yang lainnya, it's called as antecedent. Okay, remember this. Okay, now let's go next to co-indexations. So here, look at this example. Colin gave Andrea a basketball. Or let's go to D. We go back to the same example. Heidi popped herself on the head with zucchini. Di sini kita lihat yang dikurung itu adalah noun phrase Heidi noun phrase herself noun phrase the head noun phrase a zucchini noun phrase so there are four noun phrase in this sentence now let's have a look at this small yes small word we have i i j k so these small words okay or this subscript we call it a subscript yaitu ke, uh, huruf kecil yang ditulis di depannya noun phrase yes. this subscript ini ya, subscript ini kita sebut sebagai index atau indexis yeah. uh, why do we use this subscript? subscript ini adalah menunjukkan uh, apakah noun phrase yang satu dengan noun phrase yang lainnya itu saling berhubungan atau referring to the same thing Apakah merujuk pada satu benda yang sama? Heidi, I, herself, herself, her, herself means Heidi, so also I. Jadi di sini Heidi dan herself itu adalah satu benda yang sama, karena memiliki indeks yang sama. Dan indeks itu di sini dimulai dari huruf I ya, and then next I, J, K, L, M, N, and so on. Kemudian di sini on the head, uh, subscriptsnya adalah Uh, J, jadi the head ini bukan Heidi Zucchini, K, berarti Zucchini ini bukan head bukan herself, bukan juga Heidi, kita lihat di sini. jadi like for number one Colin gave Andrea basketball, so there are three different uh, noun phrases they uh, refer to different things Arts said that he, K, I, J Basketball K, the dark uh, L. So different. Second one, uh, the third one, Art I, he I. So it means that Art and he, the same person, the same thing. Basketball K, the dark L. So they are different. Okay. So from here we know that uh, we can give subscript to 
uh, noun phrase to know whether they refer to the same thing or they refer to different things. Now, if yeah, two noun phrase, uh, if two noun phrase they have the same index, so they are called as co-indexes. Jadi kalau dua noun phrase memiliki indeks yang sama, itu disebut co-indexes. If noun phrase they are co-indexes which each other are said to be co-refer. Jadi noun phrase yang co-indexes tadi disebut sebagai co-refer or refer to the same thing. Refer to the same entity in the world. Nah, ini jadi di sini. Okay, so now you know uh, subscript, index, co-index and co-refer. Okay, let's go uh, next. Okay, let's continue now. We go to binding. Okay, so binding is the relationship between a certain noun phrase to another noun phrase. Let's have a look at uh, three examples here. Heidi popped herself on the head with zucchini. So we have this subscript. Okay, referring to the same entity. And then the second one, Heidi's mother popped herself. So we have Heidi's mother. Heidi is I. Heidi's mother is J. Popped herself, J. So referring to Heidi's mother. And if we have this one, Heidi's mother referring to J. Sorry, this must be J. Popped herself referring to I. Jadi, jika herselfnya referring to Heidi, it's wrong. It's ungrammatical. Why? Look at this. Okay, look at this. Uh, uh, phrase structure three. So Heidi, N P I, popped herself N P I. So it's correct. It's about um, uh, Sikkiman. If you still remember Sikkiman, okay, I'm going to talk about Sikkiman after this. But for the second one, Heidi's mother. We have NP uh, here, I, herself here, I. So this is incorrect. Why? Because if uh, it's a different relationship. Okay, let's see the next example, uh, the next slide. Okay, so we have here the relationship between binding, co indexation, and C command. So uh, 12A, it's Correct. It's grammatical because we have the uh, the pattern here. A uh, binding A binds B if and only if A C commands B and A and B are co-index. So we see here A for example A is noun phrase. So noun phrase C commands. Uh, noun phrase here. So Heidi sequences herself. Sorry, Heidi binds herself if Heidi or noun phrase sequences herself. Noun phrase and Heidi and herself are co-index. Jadi di sini kita lihat Heidi noun phrase satu. Uh, sorry, noun phrase ie di sini dia sequences Non phrase herself. Kenapa? Karena non phrase here segment for phrase and uh, every notes downward. Jadi di sini kan uh, and non phrase di sini segment for phrase beserta seru ke bawahnya. Karena for phrase adalah saudaranya dan ke bawah ini adalah keponakannya, anaknya keponakan, cucunya keponakan. So non phrase I segment for phrase and everything under underneath for phrase. Berarti di sini N, uh, NPI segmen NPI here. Jadi NP di sini segmen NP yang berada di bawahnya VP. So it means NP binds B. But if NP segmen P and uh, A and P are co-index. Yeah. Okay, let's see the next picture. The next three. Nah, untuk kamar yang kedua di sini kita lihat Heidi di sini I apakah NPI di sini bisa si command NPI yang ada di bawahnya verb phrase no 
karena di sini uh, Heidi dan herself itu adalah uh, sepupu. Jadi herself bukan keponakannya atau anak dari saudaranya Heidi. Maka Heidi tidak bisa sikemen herself. Maka hubungan di sini dianggap dia tidak bisa binds. Jadi Heidi do not atau does not bind herself. Karena Heidi does not sikemen herself. Jadi ini yang disebut di sini referring to different thing ini adalah salah. Jadi yang pertama di sini yang benar. Jadi ini hubungan antara binding dengan koindex karena uh, hubungan itu adalah terhubung dengan indeks yang sama kemudian memiliki hukuma, uh, hubungan segmen. Oke. Okay? Nah, ini adalah gambaran dari apa yang dibahas minggu lalu. Oke, okay, next we go to binding principle. In anaphore, yep. here an anaphore must be bound. Bound artinya adalah harus dia bergantung kepada nafas yang lainnya. Tidak boleh tidak. Jadi if you find herself bobbed Heidi on the head with zucchini, kalau herself di sini menjadi subjek, kemudian memang benar di sini herself ada hubungnya dengan Heidi, tapi ini dianggap ungrammatical. Kenapa? Karena the binder yang bind, yeah. the binder atau binder itu disebut antecedent. Ingat antecedent adalah uh, noun phrase that gives meaning to another noun phrase. Must do the segmenting of the binding. Bindingnya adalah anaphore or pronoun not reverse, tidak boleh dibalik jadi binder atau antecedent itu harus si kemen bindingnya atau anaphore dan pronoun nah kalau kita lihat di sini herself itu adalah anaphore not antecedent dan yang menjadi antecedent adalah Heidi di sini Heidi tidak si kemen herself karena herself adalah bindingnya jadi tidak bisa dibalik harus Heidi-nya yang si kemen herself seperti di gambar sebelumnya. Maka ini uh, strukturnya menjadi ungrammatical atau uh, salah. Oke, okay, now we have uh, discussion on locality condition. Ya, di sini ada sebuah contoh. Heidi said that herself discord with art or Arthur perhaps. Uh, it has asterisk. It means ungrammatical. Di sini dikatakan Heidi said that herself discord with art dikatakan salah. Yang benar adalah Heidi said that she discord with art. Jadi seharusnya tidak memakai uh, anaphore tapi memakai pronoun. Why? Nah, we have a look at this. The anaphore seems to need to find its antecedent in the same class. Jadi kalau kita gambarkan tadi Heidi said that herself discord with an art di sini anaphore itu membutuhkan antecedent in the same clause. We have CP here. Complementizer phrase. And then we have TP. It means clause or sentence. So we have TP and TP. Jadi herself di sini tidak bisa merujuk ke clause yang lain di atasnya. Jadi anaphore need antecedent in the same class. Ya, karena dia harus berada di the same binding domain. Binding domain itu adalah clause, ya. Jadi anaphore needs to find its antecedent in the same clause. Jadi anaphore itu harus menemukan antecedent dalam binding domainnya dalam satu klausa karena di sini dikatakan Heidi said that itu adalah satu herself discord with all adalah klausa yang lain jadi herself ini tidak bisa merujuk ke Heidi maka yang benar adalah dia menggunakan pronoun why pronoun oke okay, let's have a look at the next nah, kita ke distribution of pronouns di sini kalau anaphor must be bound in its binding to mean kalau pronoun must be free its binding to mean di sini anaphor itu free tidak harus merujuk ke satu domain atau satu klausa. Misalnya di sini kalau Heidi popped her on the head with zucchini, her ini adalah pronoun. Di sini dikatakan I J itu benar. Karena uh, pronoun is free. Kemudian Heidi popped her 
on the head. Nah, di sini dikatakan salah kenapa? Karena kalau merujuk ke dirinya sendiri harus menggunakan anafor. Next example. He Heidi said that she discovered with art. Kemudian di sini kita lihat she referring to Heidi. Dan dalam klausa yang berbeda. Di sini dikatakan boleh. Kemudian Heidi said that she she refers to other people. Discord with art. Di sini she bisa merujuk ke Heidi atau bisa merujuk ke orang lain. It's okay for pronoun. Jadi pronoun itu free it in its binding domain. Dia bisa merujuk ke klausa sebelumnya atau dia bisa merujuk ke klausa yang lainnya. Seperti itu. So that's the difference between pronouns, uh, the distribution of pronoun and an afford. Okay, now what about the distribution of our expression? Referring expression. Yeah. The, it is about the principle C. So our expression must be free. Our expression itu free. Heidi kissed Miriam. Nah, ini salah kenapa? Karena namanya berbeda tapi kok merujuk ke benda yang sama. Art kissed Jeff. Ini juga sama begitu ya. She kissed Heidi. Ini juga tidak bisa. Bagaimana bisa mencium dirinya sendiri? She said that Heidi was a disco queen. Juga tidak bisa. She dengan Heidi merujuk ke benda yang sama. Artinya she said that okay, she saya. Yeah. Okay. So this is an our expression. Jadi uh, our expression yang uh, terakhir ini dia tidak bisa merujuk ke pronoun ya. Yeah. So our expression must be free. Dia tidak merujuk ke uh, our expression yang lain atau tidak merujuk ke pronoun dalam sebuah kalimat. Okay, so those are about our expression and pronoun and also um, antecedent and uh, what else? Yes, uh, and a four. Okay, now let's talk about sentence relatedness. So here we talk about transformational rules. What is transformational rule? It's about the uh, movement from the basic structure or from deep structure to surface structure. So surface structure, the structure that result from the application of transformational rule. Jadi perubahan dari deep ke surface itu mengalami transformation. Seperti apa? So for example, like this is a movement from uh, deep structure to questions. Yeah. So the first stretch rules generate the basic structure. Ini adalah basic structurenya. The boy is sleeping. And then we have auxiliary movement. So we move, uh, sorry. So we move is here to the front become is the boy sleeping. So this movement is called a transformation. So from basic to questions. So this is how to make questions. And we can also do the same thing if we want to make uh, or if we want to change active to passive. So the mouse move to the front, okay, and the verb change into to be plus uh, past participle. And also, if we if we change their sentence, there was a man on the roof become a man was on the roof. So we delayed there here, and we move was to after the subject or prepositional phrase uh, proposing. The astronomer saw the quasar with the telescope. With the telescope, so we move the prepositional phrase to the front. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we call as transformation. So transformation can do by moving the words or adding the words or even deleting the words or the components on a sentence. Okay, we have a structure dependent. So it's also about the binding, yeah, the relationship. So we have the sentence, the guy we met at the party next door seems kind of cute. If we draw the uh, tree, sorry, yeah, the phrase such a tree, we have sentence or tense phrase, we have noun phrase, auxiliary and verb phrase or tense here. And then we have the guy seems kind of cute. Why we have this? So uh, suppose that we we have a longer sentence misalnya di sini kalimat ini kita panjangkan ya the, the guys or the guy we met at the party next door that lasted until 3am and was finally broken up by the cops who were called by the neighbor seem or seems kind of cute uh, so it means here maksudnya di sini adalah uh, the subject and the verb must 
always agree jadi ini subject and verb agreement walaupun di antara subject dan verb itu ada kata-kata yang lain di tengah-tengahnya but subject and verb must agree so the guy if we use the guys we have to use seem if we use the guy we have to use seems so this is the relationship between subject and verb subject and predicate so even though they have long distance relationship but they still agree they have to perhatikan and also like this one if we have the boy who is sleeping was dreaming if we change this structure into questions we move was but the boy who is sleeping still one so we cannot change or we cannot move for example is jadi nggak bisa the boy is the boy who sleeping was dreaming no but was the boy who is sleeping was dreaming okay so this is the, the dependent okay i think that's all for today hopefully this can help you uh, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh